Howard is a 45-year-old second-generation artist, family man, and resident of the North Shore of Oahu for the last 20 years. Mark originated from Florida, where he's son of a well-known NASA engineer and a successful artist in his own right. It was from this family origin, Mark's father and other family members that are also successful artists, that Mark got his first introduction to the world of art. Mark specializes in three different styles of painting, studio work, plain air, and retro texture. So Mark, tell us a little bit about uh, your upbringing. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was a very, very busy life. Yeah, my, my dad was uh, he heavily into his job at NASA, putting the man on the moon, uh, and he painted on the weekends, and mom was in, involved in writing books. She sold uh, a million books, uh, and, and uh, the, the children were just as busy. I surfing, and I was surfing. We had sports, and we had art uh, that we all did, and we also had some music out too. It's just something that we did and dad was doing it, the, my, I think my mom even did it, and it was just a part of the life to uh, be, be involved in painting and creating, and uh, we worked in lots of mediums growing up. We were introduced to paper mache, we were introduced to very thick textures, uh, and, and as well as, as smooth, very smooth arts. What were the things that inspired you? Obviously the surfing has been a part of my life all the time, and I can always go back to uh, the beach and the surfing and surfers and the movement of the water and, and that's that's something that definitely inspires me but it, it's changed over the years you know I, I, I was very very intrigued by the, the sea life for a while and then and then then looking at landscapes again which I had done in the past but came back to that and it's certainly around the sea the Mount the Hawaiian mountains and the Hawaiian palm trees as well as beaches have always intrigued me I've heard you mention as many surfers have that surfing is a spiritual experience can you kind of explain the two kind of next to each other surfing is an artistic creative side and your and your art itself surfing art and the spiritual experience all three of them together it's interesting how you bring those out you know, there, there's, for some reason, when, when riding that power uh, of the waves, especially the waves here on the North Shore in Hawaii, riding the power of that and feeling all that energy and then just, and, and having that energy flow through you and then, and then pulling off of it, it is just so exhilarating. And I, and I try to, when, when, it's funny, when I start a piece, I, I, I have a blank canvas and I stand in front of that canvas and I just imagine all the energy that's the same type of energy, the spiritual energy that I'm talking about here, flowing into that canvas. And the canvas coming alive, just like the wave would, just like riding that into that wave, and just whoa. It's the same feeling. And, uh, and, and I don't know where that comes from, but I can feel it right in my chest. I can feel it at the end of the wave, and I can feel it at the beginning of a piece, I can feel it in the middle, and I can feel it at the end of a piece. And, 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 and that, that, I believe, is, is, is the spiritual connection that I have with the surfing as well as the art. Your third uh, expression is plain air. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, plain air is definitely my, probably my favorite right now. And I think the reason why is it's most demanding. What it is, is you go out and into the open air and paint what you see. And first of all, you've got to find a good composition, a good beach, a good mountain. Once I get the good composition, then I got to sketch it out and then start painting. It must be done in big, broad brush strokes because you only have a certain amount of time. The shadows are moving, everything is changing, the color of the leaves are changing, the sand and the beach will be getting drier and lighter, and the sun's going more further overhead. So this has to be done very, very quickly, very broad brush strokes, and very precise. It has to be done right. When did you first become a commercial artist? The real estate broker said, Mark, you need to do this. <laughs> and what he did was he pushed me into my first show. It was out at the Blaisdell, and I went out there. I put Mark's expressions on the line. You know, I look back at it, and it was a fantastic experience. I realized right then that, yes, this is something that I can do, and I'm only going to get better. Did you have that sort of early apprehension when you first put it out there to the public? Every artist has this apprehensive feeling. They're really worried about the critics. Speaking and dealing with the public, was, was Holly Eva Art Gallery the first gallery that, uh, that you got your start in and was showing your work? It was. George Atkins was very, very instrumental in my success over there. And he, he came over here to the house and he looked at all the pieces 
and he saw something along with Sandra Basil that came in here and, and they saw something in me. They saw potential and uh, they invited me over to the gallery. So George, what attracted you to Mark Howard? Well, the first thing of course that attracted me was his passion for what he does. <laughs> the more I learned about Mark and the more I saw in the diversity of his expressions, I became more and more interested in his work and uh, he certainly fit the criteria of diversity. Uh, he was singularly different than anyone else in the gallery and uh, we always look for that. So we went through philosophical discussions and then uh, I decided to take Mark on. Uh, but I was continually amazed uh, as we took him on and he, his, his personal uh, passion for growing his own uh, expertise in art and being able to get deeper into his work and, and a broader expression base uh, of his pieces. We feel like having an artist come into the gallery and be here, uh, he of course does it every Saturday on a you know, very continual basis, and it's a very a close bonding, uh, of course, between the, myself and the gallery staff and Mark, so it's, it's a wonderful thing to have those artists come in. Uh, we have our, our Saturday, last Saturday of every month, we have our art walk when you know, eight or ten artists will come in and do the same thing all at once. And uh, so it's it's always great to have an artist be connected. We're very connected with all of our artists. We know them all personally, and that's very important. Mark, you've uh, you've also been in the Holly Eva Art Festival for a couple of years, but there was something a little different, and uh, and I would say special about this last year. Tell us about that experience. I was selected as the, the featured artist this year and I had painted the Aoki Shave Ice piece for the poster. I didn't have any idea that that was become the poster. I submitted it and uh, the, the, the uh, committee really, really liked the piece. They thought that it absolutely needed to be there because the Aoki family has really supported the Holly Var Festival throughout the years. They wanted to present something uh, before their older building was torn down. Tell us a little bit about the piece and what it means to you. Well, certainly I wanted to capture all of the local flavor, you know, it, it, the folks out front and, and the, the happiness of, of being it with the, you know, comfort food of the shave ice. And I certainly wanted to capture that in the anticipation of folks standing in line. One thing that, that I didn't realize that there was a couple of motorcycle guys in there and Kathy Aoki came by the art festival and she says, I was so happy that you got these motorcycle riders in there because they've come every single day for the last 15 years. So it was a really cool and special part of that whole event for me. Where do you see yourself going from here? I've kind of described life and this development thing as you open up a door and you have no idea what's inside there and it's all dark, but you gotta take a step into the dark. You have to. And then once you take a, take a step in the dark, whoa, something lights up. And then something else lights up. And the door's shut behind you. You can't go back. And you've got it all figured out. And then there's another door. And you got to open that door and you got to walk into it. And it's all dark again. So my artwork's the same way. You know, I have no idea where I'm going <laughs> with the artwork. But I know it'll be creative. I'll have lots of that energy and lots of that spirit that I talked about into it and it'll make me and maybe a few other people feel wonderful.